Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In this particular video, I will explain the problem power of numbers. So the problem is asked by companies like Walmart, Make My Trip, etc. and is based on a really important concept which is fast exponentiation. So let me start with the problem statement. Pretty simple and straightforward guys. It says that you are given a number and its reverse and you have to find that number raised to the power of its own reverse. So if you are given a number like 10 then the reverse will be 0 1 right and we have to find the number raised to the power its own reverse so for this example the output is going to be 10 now one more example is given in the problem statement so this example is 2 right and the number raised to the power its own reverse is going to be 2 raised to the power 2 and this is nothing but 4 right so 4 is going to be the output for this example now there may be some more examples like uh, the number 12 and for this, if I perform the number raised to the power its own reverse, then the answer will be very large, right? And this number cannot be held by data types like integer or long. So for these answers or for even every example, we have to calculate the answer modulo 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 so that we can avoid the overflow of the answer, right? Now, I hope you have understood the problem statement. So let me talk about the solution now. Okay, so according to the problem, we have to calculate a number raised to the power its own reverse, right? So this is n raised to the power r. In order to explain the first approach, let me write an example. So I have n equals to 8 and reverse is also equals to 8 for this case, right? And we have to find 8 raised to the power 8. So I can write this term as 8 into 8 into 8 into 8, then into 8 into 8. 8 times right so this is what I can write now the first approach that will come to your mind is we can start a loop and keep multiplying the number 8 till r right so this is what we can do and the implementation is like answer is initially going to be equal to 1 then we will keep multiplying the answer in loop so for i equals to 0 to r right and inside this I'll do answer equals to answer multiplied with uh, the same number and this is after this, we have to calculate the mod as well, right? So that we can avoid the overflow of the integer. At last, we can simply return the answer. So this is about the first approach. Talking about the complexity, so it is going to be O of R, right? But there is a problem with this approach. The problem, in order to explain the problem, let me start a, a dry run of this approach. So initially, the answer is equal to 1 and I am at this place, right? For the first iteration, the answer will become uh, 8, right? The answer will become 8 for this iteration. After this, for the second iteration, the answer will become 8 into 8, which is 64. For the third iteration, the answer will become 512. And for the fourth, fourth iteration, the answer will become 4096, right? Okay. And further, it is going to move again and again in order to calculate the answer at last. But the problem is, once we have got that 8 raised to the power 4 is 4096, then in order, uh, then instead of multiplying uh, like Instead of performing four more operations, what we can do is we can perform only one operation, which is 8 raised to the power 4 into again 8 raised to the power 4. This is nothing but 4096 into 4096, right? This is going to reduce the number of operations that we are performing. And this is something which is an optimization, right? So now I can write 8 raised to the power 8 as 8 raised to the power 4 into 8 raised to the power 4. So this is something that gives us an idea behind the fast exponentiation technique. Now let me talk about the technique in detail. So I have written the heading here and in order to explain the fast exponentiation technique, let me write the same example. So we have to calculate 8 raised to the power 8, right? Okay, I can write this as 8 raised to the power 4 into 8 raised to the power 4 and even it makes sense. Let's say this is represented by a function which is solve. Uh, n comma r right where n is equal to 8 and r is equal to 8 so i can write this as uh, solve n divided by uh, like n comma r by 2 into n comma uh, like okay n comma r by 2 why i am writing this because i know whenever we multiply uh, two numbers like this then the power gets added so it will be nothing but 4 plus 4 right okay so now what I'll do is I'll show you this uh, like dr the dry run of this approach in detail. Let me start. So we have 8 raised to the power 8, right? I can write this as 
8 raised to the power 4 into 8 raised to the power 4 and each 8 raised to the power 4 I can write as 8 raised to the power 2 into 8 raised to the power 2 and each 8 raised to the power 2 I can write as uh, 8 raised to the power 1 into 8 raised to the power 1 right so once we have calculated 8 raised to the power 1 then we can simply calculate 8 raised to the power 2 and once we have calculated 8 raised to the power 2 then we can simply calculate 8 raised to the power 4 and this can eventually give us the answer. So let me start with this. This is the first operation. We know this is a kind of base case whenever the power of a number is 1 then the answer is the number itself right. So we can write 8 for this. So 8 into 8 is going to give me 64. So now I know 8 raised to the power 2 is 64, right? Once I have got this, then I just need to, okay, so I will keep track of operations as well. So I have performed one multiply operation here, right? Now, I have got 8 raised to the power 2 equals to 64. So I can multiply 64 two times in order to get 8 raised to the power 4. This is what I'm doing here. So I'll do 64 into 64, right? And this is going to give me the number uh, 4096. 4096 and now I have performed two multiplication operations isn't it okay so once we have got 8 raised to the power 4 so I can do 4096 into 4096 in order to get uh, 8 raised to the power 8 right and this is going to give me the answer and now I have performed three multiplications here right so you can see here that I have performed only three multiplication and I have got my answer and here we were performing like a lot of operations so you can see the optimization here okay and now this is the approach that we need to follow but the problem with this approach is again we are calling the same function two times right but we can avoid this we can avoid this instead of doing this particular thing what we can do is uh let me change the color first so instead of doing this i can store this particular thing somewhere and then multiply the same answer with uh itself right so i'll say that okay power power equals to solve for n and r by 2 right this is going to give me this value once i have got this value then i can say answer equals to power into power so now you can see that i'm only calling the function one time right but there is one more important thing that we need to uh, discuss the thing is Till now we are only talking about the even power of the number you can see here right so what if the power is odd let's say I have 9 raised to the power 9 so I can't divide this 9 by 2 right so there is a problem however in order to solve the problem I can write this as uh, like 9 into 9 divided by 2 into 9 9 divided by 2 if I do the integer division that then this will give me 4 right so it is 9 raised to the power 4 Okay, uh, I have to write into 9 raised to the power 9 by 2 as well, 2 times. So, it is 9 raised to the power 4 into 9 raised to the power 4 into 9, right? This is what I can do. So, now you can see that again the problem is simple. I have to call the same function for this as well and this is going to give me 9 raised to the power 2. This is again going to give me 9 raised to the power 2. So, we have uh, got one thing till now that uh, if we have odd, if we have odd power, so let's say I have a function solve. Uh, n comma r right so and we have calculated the power power as by calling the function for r by 2 so this is solve uh, n comma r by 2 right we have got this now we have to take two cases if r is odd if r is even so if r is odd let's say r mod 2 equals to 1 if r is odd then we have to return uh, power into power into n right this is what we have to return and else we can simply return return power into power right this is what we can do in order to solve the problem but till now we have not discussed the base cases so what are the base cases here because this is a recursive function you can see that i am calling the same function recursively so this function have to stop somewhere so this will stop when r will either become 1 or become 0 right and whenever I know, whenever we have the power of any number as 0, then the answer is 1, right? Then the answer is 1. I know this thing. One more thing is, if the power of any number is equal to 1, so we have discussed it, the answer is n in this case. Uh, the answer in this case will be n, right? Let's say I have 5 raised to the power 1, then 5, 6 raised to the power 1 is 6. So this is how we solve the power 1 of any number, right? Okay, so... 
Here I have written the pseudo code for the solution. You can see the pseudo code here. All we need to do is we need to just modify this pseudo code so that it uh, like handle the cases for overflow as well. So we need some mod way here somewhere, right? We need mod which is 10 raised to the power 9 plus 7 and then we can simply perform the mod everywhere like mod here, mod here. Like I can modify this expression as power uh, cross power then whole mod, right? After this multiply with n and then again mod, right? So again I can write the same thing for this as well. This is nothing but power into power mod mod right this is going to avoid the overflow as well now talking about the time complexity of this approach so the recurrence, recurrence relation is quite similar to the one we used in the binary search which is t uh, will become t by 2 okay t of n will give me t of n by 2 plus 1 right and whenever we have a recurrence relation uh, like this so this is like dividing the search space into half each time this is about binary search but for this example we are dividing the answer uh, the value r each uh, uh, by 2 right so this is going to give me the complexity as o of log n this is about the time complexity talking about the space complexity so again you can see that we are using some stack space here and this is nothing but log n again, right so this is about the solution now let me show you the code so Okay, so I have written the C++ code on the left hand side and Java and Python code on the right hand side. So you can see that the comp, uh, implementation is quite similar to the uh, like mm, uh, pseudo code I have explained in the approach, right? So this is all about this problem. I hope you guys will like the explanation. If you like the explanation, then you can hit the like button. Thank you.